Hey everybody, Pop Call. I'm live in uh, Washington, D.C. It's my man Vic here. Good morning. <laughs> Cash has abandoned me. He's in Pakistan, actually. Uh, Pakistan, right? Yeah. And uh, But this is my man Vic. He's also a business owner. Uh, he owns his own car service business. He's a good, good man. He's been with me for how many years, Vic? Oh, gosh. Uh, I think after 2011. So a long time, six, seven years, maybe yeah, a little almost more. a decade. He's not getting, he's not tired of me yet. Hey, Mary, uh, joining in from Alaska. So uh, he doesn't normally bring him into this conversation, but I'm going to in a minute. So I'm in Washington D.C. Hey, everybody, signing on. Um, it's not that I disappear, by the way. Sometimes I get knee deep in business deals, and I just can't, you know, engage in the video on that day. But know that I am not forgotten about you, and I'm not going away. Uh, I'm here in every respects. All right, Washington DC, I'm here giving a speech for Homeland Security a little later. Okay, let's get into this, uh, the way people talk. Uh, now, Vic, I'm talking about how how the wealthy and, and those who are poor speak differently. All right, so Vic doesn't know I'm not gonna involve him in this conversation. I'm just gonna start it and see what Vic has to say. Okay, so um, are wealthy people any better than poor people? The answer is no. Everybody's God's child, everybody's important. Everybody uh, has the potential to be incredibly human, trans incredibly transformational human beings on this planet. Everybody. What did Dr. King say? If you're a trash collector, be the best trash collector the world's ever seen. Hey, Delmar Bennett. Uh, see you guys signing on. Hey, Jamie Nelson. Be the best trash collector the world's ever seen. Whatever you do, do it with absolute excellence. Hey, uh, uh, Adrienne Dunn. Um, so do it with excellence. But here's the difference in, hey, Yvonne, in the, in the way that the poor, so-called poor, and the wealthy speak. And let me define poverty now. Beyond food on the table and, and a roof over your head, poverty I'm talking about is mentally, the mental. The poverty I discuss in the memo, if you haven't got the memo, go get that book, is mental, uh, is mental poverty, okay? So it's very important that you understand that there's a difference between being broke and being poor. Being broke is economic, but being poor is a disabling frame of mind, a depressed condition of your spirit, and you must vow never, ever, ever to be poor again. Or as I say in the memo, if you have inner capital, you'll never be poor. If you don't have inner capital, hey Damon, Irvis, all the money in the world, hey Wayne, all the money in the world won't save you. Now, I'm in the airport all the time. And I'm just observing folks, okay? Hey, Michelle Bryant. I'm just observing folks. Here's what I see uh, my wealthy friends saying. Uh, wealthy in spirit, wealthy in mentality. Hey, man, uh, got this contract. Uh, you know, what's going on with the deliverable from Joe and Unit 6? And, uh, you know, we got to meet to, to talk about the real estate deal. And, you know, we have a conflict with this client, but, you know, we got to make this client happy. So here's the four things we need to do to resolve that. Uh, I'm at home with my wife talking about buying some real estate uh, this uh, evening. Uh, need to get my attorney involved and need to do uh, some research analysis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. That is uh, some of the conversation you hear talking, t t t talking or talk coming from folks who have a wealth mentality. Here's the conversation I hear coming from really, really smart people. Uh, and by the way, I want to commend all the, the folks who walk up to me in airports or whatever and say hello, particularly the black men. I love when, when, when strong black men walk up and say, hey, they're inspired by these videos and, and the walk that we do with the Civil Rights Movement and Operation Hope and everything we're doing, Promise Homes Company, and, and that it shows them what they can do. So all the brothers, including this morning, walk up to me uh, and give me some love, some dap. Thank you. I appreciate everybody, uh, particularly black men who show courage, personal courage to show up and show out that they are living a new kind of life, living their best life. Okay, now, here's the, the poverty conversation that I get all the time, or that I observe all the time. Yo, man, you know, homegirl, you know what I'm saying? She, she's, uh, she's not, you know, she's not thinking about me, or what, what's she doing with you, or, you know, I'm talking to you 100, man. I'm talking to you 100. That just drives me crazy. I'm talking to you 100. We're talking about 100 about what? Talking about not, you're not talking about $100. You're not talking about an investment of $100,000. You're not talking, I mean, you're not talking 100 about uh, investing in your education. This conversation I was observing last week, this 100 conversation, was a brother who was cursing somebody out, another guy, uh, about a girl, uh, about a girl. Uh, in public, he worked at the airport, 
uh, but he was um, distraught over some woman and was talking to a guy on the phone, doesn't know if I'm a supervisor, don't know me from Adam, uh, in the airport about some woman. And this conversation went on for 10, 15 minutes. Unfortunately, I was in proximity of it. And, and he, you know, he's just, he's using uh, a vernacular that is really about um, about other people and about things that don't matter. Hey man, I'm 100. You know, this is a one. I'm talking to you 100. I'm, I'm coming to you 100. I'm, 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 you know, I'm giving you respect 100. You know, I, I mean, I understand it's slang, and I don't really mind the slang. I mind the topic that people who are poor talk about other people, and people who are wealthy talk about their ideas. Vic, yes, yes. That makes a lot of sense to me, yeah. I'm going to repeat that. People who are wealthy talk about their ideas. People who are pursuing wealth in their life are talking about doing something, going somewhere, being somebody, about their next objective, next obstacle, how they're going to resolve it. They're talking about their ideas. And people who have a poverty mentality are always talking about somebody else. The Kardashians, which is not going to put a dollar in your pocket. Hip Hop Atlanta. The, whatever TV show, whatever celebrity, whatever rap star, what you know, the, the girl, the guy, the person who, who's you know gossiping, always wasting your time talking about something that literally, literally does not matter. So last night, okay, you guys are getting that. Okay, great. So last night, I'm talking to um, a loved one along with my best friend uh, about um, uh, about the, the nature of socializing about going out and there was an argument made that going out uh had value and and i knew what this person was saying but i was intentionally baiting them and i said no it actually most times does not have value and it got in this long debate about it and here's what i have to say if you own the club club strip club dance club then yes it has value if you're at the club because your business is, in this case, it was a stylist um, or a fashion designer or somebody who's getting clients through the right side of their, through the creative world where client acquisition is done in the entertainment and music world and fashion world face to face. It's relationships. You got to be there in order to get the business. Then, yes, I absolutely understand. In this particular example, this brilliant person used to own a fashion house and had a, a, uh, um, a wet bar in a uh, in a host sitting area at their fashion house, so that once the entertainers went to the clubs and all that stuff in New York, they'd stop by the fashion house and get fitted for the 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 next you know set of clothes for their next show. They were in that it's a flow, it's an energy uh, that people in that space and that industry work with, and so I then understand yes why it's important to then socialize at the clubs, you know, go to the events go to all the social activities, and then to have a business establishment that's open at one or two in the morning in this example. But that's the exception, not the rule. That's a rare exception. For folks who are, uh, now this person was writing checks, not just cashing them. They, were, they, were, they weren't networking their relationship building, and they were doing customer acquisition at the club, at the award show, at the social engagement. But most folks who engage in this activity are just, are, are just having fun. And only in the dictionary does the word success come before the word work because it's alphabetical. I'm going to repeat that. Only in the dictionary does the word success come before the word work because it's alphabetical. <laughs> okay? You've got to do the work first. Is that right, Vic? Very true. All right? Uh, you, can't, you can't go partying three nights. I'm going to be very, very precise for you. You cannot party two or three nights a week and can compete with me or Vic because Vic is working jobs like this one. Then he's going home and, you know, thinking about his craft, thinking about his roots the next day, do, doing reports for his clients, taking care of his family. Yes or no? Yes. All right. But your mindset is what am I doing tomorrow? Once you get to a certain time this evening, right? You got to You got to plan ahead. You got to organize yourself. Get, get reorganized and attack the day yeah. and try and stay as positive as you can no matter what. So so am I saying don't go to the club? No, I'm not. All right? You know, I'm going to go to the Grammys. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go to the concerts. I'm going to enjoy myself. But that's after the work is done. And that's sort of a bonus. That's sort of a reward for 
yourself after you do the work. After you do the work. But if you're in the club two or three nights a week, I'm going to clock you. <laughs> I'm going to destroy you at the negotiating table. Because while you're working, while you're partying, I'm working. While you're talking about somebody else, I'm talking about my ideas. While you're gossiping or chasing this woman, and by the way, by the way, by the way, the woman don't want a broke dude. They won't never tell this to you, tell you this, right? They may, not, they may not tell you this to you straight up in your face, but she don't want some broke dude with no job, no aspiration, who all he does. Now you may be cute, and she may hang out with you for a minute, but after a while, she's gonna get tired of you because you have no marketable future, right? So you've got to you got to bring something to the table. And that's why you'll see ultimately you see a 300 pound dude who owns a uh, uh, you know a multi million dollar company with some fine chick because ultimately she wants protection and safety, security, um, and a sense of confidence for, that this guy is able to give her. Well, he got that weight other than the weight by working hard, not partying hard. He needs to go to the gym too, other because there's no 80 year old, uh, 300 pound person. It doesn't exist, all right. So, so you got to get your health straight. You know, there, there's no 80 year old, 300 pound people. So get your health straight. So somebody said you better tell it. So, so the, says, says Yvonne. I guess she's talking about the 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 the, the, the woman male dynamics, and, and so the even the woman does not want the dude who parties all the time. She may met you at a party. She don't want a guy who all he does is party. But I'm gonna make this again very clear to you. This is simply math. If you spend all of your time partying and having fun, you cannot compete with me because I'm working from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. I'm studying, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing, I'm preparing, uh, I'm, up, I'm up early, I'm staying up late, I'm hustling, and I'm focused on my objective. So if you want to compete with me in business, I'm going to clock you every time because I am an entrepreneur, somebody who works 18 hours a day to keep from getting a job. <laughs> and I love what I do, and my club is my computer, all right? My club is my house. My club is my family. So what club are you joining? Are you club joining the broke club? You joining the uh, I don't have a job club? You joining the I'm hanging out with everybody else who's broke club? Because if you're hanging around nine broke people, I'll say it again, you'll be the 10th. And a lot of people who, well, if you're hanging around at a club, I'm gonna, let, me, let me be very clear about this. Let's assume that you're a football player. You got a contract, professional football player, but but now you're partying thirty percent of your time because you got this, you got this money, you're flossing, whatever. Okay, can you compete with the other professional football player who's partying one night a week or one night every couple weeks, and he's having a good time? He's going for the weekend of the Bahamas or whatever. He's he's having a good time, but but the rest of the time he's focusing on his craft. He's studying, he's preparing, he's in the gym. Can you compete? Answer is no. It's simple math. Vic, somebody is trying to be in the car service business. Uh, they're out partying and socializing five nights a week. Um, they're not trying to get, they're not trying to understand, and they're, they're not out where, where, where the people who hire them are. They're not going to the Chamber of Commerce meetings. They're not going to private clubs. They're not going to uh, places, the hotels like this. They're out at the club scene hanging out and partying with other people who have nine to five jobs. But you are cultivating, you and my man uh, Cash are cultivating your clients. You're marketing, you're, try, you're, you're, you're trying to figure out how to get more business. Who's gonna be more successful? Oh, the guy who works hard and the guy who's gonna, you know, focus on his work before unwinding, which is actually sitting down for a drink or going partying. Personally, if you ask me, I can't sit down and have a drink if I work on the table. I gotta make sure it's all done and taken care of before I sit down and enjoy a glass of wine because that makes my troubles deeper every time I take a drink. And if I'm still, my mind is just in a loophole thinking about things, it just gets me deeper in a hole. So I make sure that I take care of my issues first, then I sit down and have a drink where I can actually enjoy the drink. I drink a glass of wine every you know couple of days. Right. Uh, Nothing wrong with uh, it. You know, with meals. Lowers so. your blood pressure. That's so right. that's, that's what's, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, I do personally. And I try to stay as positive as I can no matter what. And every one of us uh, has gone through our own battles, wars, and God knows what. And the minute you give up, you call it quits. And the point is not to quit. And um, I've learned um, over the years, a decade plus with Mr. Bryant, whom I respect like there's no tomorrow. And the only thing I want to tell him personally for folks watching 
that he should stop frowning and smiling at the same time. <laughs> makes his nose crinkle. Uh, so, that's uh, me see, in a nutshell. See, the camera didn't like that. <laughs> Cam camera, didn't, the camera didn't like that. Let me see this. Let me see you. Let's see. Buddy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See, see the, the camera didn't like Vic's com Vic's comments, so it went berserk. All right, uh, Jamie, you wondering what's going on here? I'm trying a new a new camera uh, technology here, and it's not working very well. So, so Vic has to start frowning on the screen. The screen just went blank. <laughs> Smiling and frowning yeah, doesn't people, work. Yeah, folks, you know you're tense and you can't right. enjoy drinks. So, so, so look, am I telling you not to party, not to have a good time? No, I'm not saying that. I'm look, enjoy yourself. But if you're going to the club to forget about your problems. Uh, you're gonna have more problems if you're putting your if you're putting fun be, before working at the factory. You're gonna have more problems if you're if you're under, if you're putting if you if you think that flossing is a is a way to get to to to, to well if you think that flossing and having fun is going to uh, somehow make you wealthy. Let me help you out here. It's gonna make you poor. Simple math. If 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 somebody else is working. 80% of their time and party in 20% of their time and you're working 40% of your time and party in 60% of your time, the person who is working the, the mad hours is going to clock you every time. It is simple math. So I want you to flip the script. Enjoy yourself 20% of the time and part and enjoy yourself 20% of the time and work 80% of the time versus <laughs> a lot of folks who are their whole life is obsessed with who they who they're dating, who they're hanging around, wh wh where they're going out, what's their next vacation, you know, wh what their friends doing, what's some celebrity doing, you know, who's on Facebook, who's on Twitter, who cares? <laughs> okay, they're not paying your bills. Charity starts at home, Be even when you're on the plane. Harry says, Motivational Monday. Even when you're on the airplane, the flight attendant will tell you, put the oxygen mask on your face first and then your child. Because if you can't save you, you cannot save them. Charity starts at home. Take care of your business. <laughs> you, you, you can spell that B-I-S, B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S, N-E-S-S, -S, business, B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S, -S, or you can spell that business, business, B-N-A-S. I don't care how you, you spell it. I want you to pronounce. Vic is dry, he's dying over here. I want you to. I want you to spell that as success. S U C C E S S. Success, as defined as putting in the W O R K. Work. Work before F U N. Fun. And if somebody's sitting on your couch, uh, at your house, complaining about life, tell them to go get a job. I love you, cousin Jojo, but you need to go get a job. I love you, cousin, cousin Louie, but if you're going to have, the, have this child, you've got to take care of them. I love you, Jojo, but if you're going to do the crime, you damn well going to do the time. You've got to put your priorities first and learn to self-talk yourself into a place where you deal with the most difficult thing first. Most of us want to forget about our problems. I guarantee the problems will just get worse. Do the most difficult thing first. You'll find it wasn't as bad as you thought, right? And then when you go and enjoy yourself, you won't feel guilty about it. You'll actually enjoy it as the pleasure it should be. All right. Enjoy your Monday. Sorry about the crazy uh, camera angles. Uh, it's Vic's fault or uh, Jamie's fault or somebody's fault. Um, uh, it's actually my responsibility. I'm, 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 I'm trying to be Mr. Everything here, include my own cameraman. All right. I'll talk to you a little later today. Peace and light.